And right now, it's time for Mr. Les Nessman with a whole mess of news. W-K-R-P. Morning, Les. Morning, Johnny. Cincinnati. It's all yours. London. Madrid. Bangkok. Cincinnati, one of the four corners of the world, from the news capitals at home and abroad, the day's headlines brought into focus, the issues and events that shape our time. WKRP, information beacon of the Ohio Valley presents Les Nessman and the News. <laughs> And up to the minute commentary from one of journalism's most trusted voices, five time winner of the Buckeye News Hawk Award. Is that new? I just had it made. Very nice. I like it. Now here's Les Nessman and the News. Good morning. This is Les Nessman reporting. <laughs> And now here's, let me say it another way. And now here's Richard Sanders. Reporting. <laughs> that was a great introduction. We couldn't top it, Richard. It's Who so, is that guy? Yes, I know. It was a masked man, I think. You, of course, are here at Tiffany's Attic in same time next year. And before we get to that, however, I want to also greet you as a fellow graduate of Leavenworth High School. Well, that's my greatest claim to fame. <laughs> know that until yesterday. Class of, or are you going to tell us? Well, 58. 58? I'm not ashamed. And we've got the yearbook here, and as we talk, we're going to be looking at some of the immortal pictures from the past. Oh, yeah. And yearbook pictures are always a lot of fun, and this is going to be no exception. Well, I understand, a little bird said, that you had a dream. And one of the pictures, which we'll come up on at some time, you have a dream, had a dream to be a rock and roll star? Well, it doesn't everybody. I mean, oh, I, you? I see. Yes, I forgot about that. <laughs> and we mustn't forget there's a moment on stage when you hold forth with the guitar. Uh, well, you go just into a brief it, moment. The right. knees do a little jerking <laughs> around there. It's great stuff. Let's set up the scene, if we might, just real quickly for same time next year. You are a married man, and there's another woman in your life who is married to someone else. And the two of you meet each other once a year. Interesting kind of romance. Yes, uh, it's, it is a very, uh, actually it's a very interesting play because these two people go through 24 years of their lives meeting in about five year intervals and uh, getting to know each other very well and each other's respective spouses. Yes. You know something you said last night when we saw the play, John was talking about a, a tradition in Germany, well maybe you should, uh, well, yes. people once a, a year for a week just leave every each other and sort of just do their own thing sort of it's like called what fashing, and then they oh, come back right. with no questions asked right and once a year you and your girlfriend have a chance to get together like that mm -hmm. it's a sort of a separate life for each of you right uh, and actually I think everybody probably has relationships. Perhaps they don't go to the extent <laughs> as the Doris and George's relationship goes, but they do have people that they know and through their lives get back together oh, with. Sure. And it's kind of like a touchstone for yeah. your life, you know, to kind of put yourself, your own life in perspective. And uh, I find that there, there's uh, actually a friend of mine that I went to high school with, uh, ran into in New York. Uh, a guy who works now for, uh, was working for Citicorp and now for a data processing firm. And uh, we ran into each other after not seeing each other for 16 years mm -hmm. or so. And uh, it's interesting because now we kind of keep in touch and, you know, I find it's out about his family and he finds out what I'm doing. And, it's, it's and each time you and Laurel Adams have your reunion each year, you have mm -hmm. changed. And it, the play picks up on some crucial times throughout about a 25 year span where things have happened to the both of you. Maybe you can give us just one example. <sighs> Well, uh, one, one very, uh, <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of interesting things. I don't want to give away the plot, right. but. Uh, Just a little bit, maybe. Um, I know that George uh, is very uptight at certain periods of his life, and then he becomes uh, uh, a little trying. He tries desperately to kind of relax and get into a different kind of lifestyle as he seeks to find out who he is and, and why he's doing what he's doing. What do you love about the character, George? I mean, you know, you, you, well, you have to find something in it. It's my life story. At which he point do you, do you identify him with strongest uh, on your own personal level? I think uh, all the way through. Uh, you know the book uh, Gail She wrote? Uh, passages. Uh, passages. Mm -hmm. It's almost like doing passages of kind of a, uh, where people go through different periods of their lives. And uh, I think I've been through every, every one of them by now. And what kind of a stretch is it as an actor to, to take you from one? How old are you when you start, supposedly? Well, he's in about 30. When, when he, he starts. starts. And yeah. she's about how old? Um, she's 20, 20, actually 29, I think. 29. Yeah, and, yeah. The, and 23 years, 24 years later, is that mm -hmm. the, the length? Yeah. 
as an actor to stretch what does that do to you well, uh, it's a lot of fun. It's, yeah. It beats 24 minutes of a situation comedy because <laughs> no. you got two and a half hours to go out there and, and really kind of get into the well, thing. After the play, you even told us, we get paid for having fun. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it is a very interesting voyage, you know, it's every work. night. It is work to, well, to, to plot that out. Yeah. So it's and, believable uh, at each point. And, and to feel right there in the moment all the way through. And, yeah. and, with that, and when we walk off stage, you know, we have instantaneous complete changes from costumes. What happens in your mind as an actor as you walk off and go from What one happens to the in my other? mind? I say, I gotta get on shoes, I gotta get those tie on. <laughs> so there's very little that goes on in I my mean, mind except it, changing clothes. It becomes technical <laughs> during production, but yeah. as you're as you're researching a role, what do you have to do to get yourself from one level to another? Basically I I tried to remember, you know, the things that I had been through, the similar things and uh, also, we have the slides, uh, and I've watched the slideshows several really times. Nice. They kind of lead out of the scenes and lead into the scenes. The music, the music helps me an awful lot. Yes, hearing the music the audience from those, too. those times, because we go back, we hear before each scene, we hear the music at the time. We see some visuals of the. Oh, those time. slideshows are little mm -hmm. time capsules that separate each scene, and they take us back to the Beatles and uh, the Nixon resignation and things. Yeah. And such the audience as that. enjoys that too. It's just a continuum so. of the of the plot. I think but it helps us a lot. The, the yes. human interest, Richard, when you and your girlfriend, you've just had your romantic uh, liaison here mm -hmm. and yet you're trading pictures of your families uh -huh. back and forth. That yeah. is the kind of touch that I think so many people identify with yeah. in a way. Well, it's reality. I think that's what happens. I mean, <laughs> Before we go to our break, and then we're going to talk more about who you are, what you've been doing since the series and things okay. such as that. Um, do you suppose that this will be the beginning of a career for dinner theater now that you're going to want to pursue? Is this new to you? Well, it's strange because uh, I had just gotten back from New York from a trip. We did a movie. Uh, my partner and I wrote a movie that was filmed in New York. And so I, on the way back, I took the train. I went a long route back through Chicago and Seattle and down the coast. And I think when I was in S Seattle, I had the idea, well, I really like to do a play now. I really would like to do a play. Why, why a play? That is to say, write a play. Well, do a play. And I was also thinking of writing a play, uh -huh. too but I'd like to write and do a play. I really need the, the experience of doing a play again. And uh, so I got home on Thursday and Friday, um, Richard Carruthers, uh, who runs the Tiffany's Attic, called and said, uh, do you, uh, would you be interested in doing a play for us? <laughs> so I said, well, this really? is fate. I better go mm -hmm. ahead. I better not turn, it, turn aside from here. And of course, the results of that are known to us now. And we're going to talk more about the play and about your own career after we come back from these words. More with Richard Sanders. <laughs> well, Richard Sanders, formerly Les Nesman of WKRP, now on stage here in Kansas City at Tiffany's in same time next year. You were just telling us during the break, Richard, that WKRP was shot before an audience. That's right. Uh, so, you know, it hasn't been completely foreign to me to get exactly. in front of people for the last four years. Um, we always tape. Well, generally speaking, our week would go like this. On Mondays, we would come in and get the new script and read it over for the writers and producers and the network people, and they would start making their notes and run upstairs and start rewriting. So basically, all week long until Thursday, we're doing scenes, you know, we're blocking them, we're showing them to the producers, and they're giving us new, new dialogue and new bits of business, and we're giving them new bits of business in, in, in ways in which the thing might work better. Speaking of business, the bow tie, was that your idea? Uh, well, it happened at a photo session, I guess, and the pilot less wore a regular straight tie in a photo session later when we got the pickup and we were going to do the, the series, you know. We, they were playing around with different looks, and it seemed like the bow tie was appropriate. Now, in a series with writers and everything, how much uh, creativity do you have as an actor to alter, for well, example, the, the bow tie? And, and you wrote some of the uh, KRP. Yeah, too. they were very good about letting us have a lot of input, uh, which is, I think, for most of the series, is the series that work well, you, you do have people who kind of there's a back and forth sure. dialogue. I mean, it's a community effort. You know? um, but but we would sh tape, see, Thursday, then we'd have camera blocking where we'd go through with the cameras. That's when the camera crew would come in and they would check the camera angles and everything. And Friday, we'd go in and tape the show without an audience, so we'd have it all clear technically in case we had to mm -hmm. edit in sure. any mistake that happened during the air show. And then Friday night, the audience would come in, we'd do the show, and the audience was always very helpful because sure. they would give us, get us our Sense adrenaline and we'd get the, you know. But many times I felt like, I wish we could do this three or four times, you know, so we could figure out where the laughs really are and where the things are. And uh, so that's the nice thing about doing a play. Every night it's different. Well, and from watching kind of WKRP, a lot of people probably don't know a lot of things about you. And they don't know probably that you're a Fulbright scholar instead of a nerd, <laughs> for example. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know that uh, you played heavies and done uh -huh. classical theater and have quite a background in musical theater, played Raisin on Broadway for two years, things that they don't know about you. And now they probably don't know that you have a slash actor-writer. Maybe yeah. you can tell us about 
How and then we got some yearbook pictures. Oh, okay. <laughs> great. Well, the, I've always been interested in writing and I've always been doing some on the side. In the early days in New York, in order to pay for the rent, you know, I'd write pulp magazine fiction and tried to learn story construction. And uh, um, on WKRP, uh, the producer was open and I would go and twist his arm every once mm -hmm. in a while. We'd go in with a script and we did uh, four or five of the, I guess, yeah, five of the uh, shows we wrote. And um, that was a, a, a real fulfilling thing, except that it made me much more nervous, you know, to go out there and, and say the lines and hope that they were, you know, half my ear would be listening, does this work or doesn't work? Does it help you as an actor to, ha to be the observer writer? It helps a lot to have acted, if you're writing kind of that kind of visual script. It doesn't pertain to novels or, or short story writing, but as far as uh, if, if you write a scene that you feel you can act, uh, you know, uh, for, for film or television or something, then, then uh, de usually it does work, you know. And um, we've, we wrote this movie with Dick, uh, that Dick Van Dyke and Sid Caesar just finished shooting in June in New York. When, and, is, it, um, when is it? Is it made for TV? It's a television movie. It'll be on NBC. Um, they seem very high on it, and they want to put it on just before Christmas time. So, uh, and what's the name of that? At the present time, it's called Max and Sam. At the present time, it's yes. Max and Sam. It may change uh, to become much kind of grab the audience a little more, much more of a hook name. But uh, I think at the present, well, anyway, it's the only film that's going to come out with Dick Van Dyke and Sid Caesar. Listen, I'm going to jump in here too Go because ahead. we've got some yearbook pictures Let's take to a look. look at. We cannot resist this. Let's take a look. Now, guess where he is. Where is Richard? Right in the thick of the action, so to speak. <laughs> what is this organization at Leavenworth High School? Well, that was our drama club, I think. And, uh, you know, we had a thespian group there. Uh, I, you do know what a thespian is, John. Well, I, yes. well, I hope so. <laughs> it's and not I what, you th what you might think it is. <laughs> <laughs> I notice all of the other guys in the picture are at the edges. You're right there <laughs> yeah. in the middle of it all. <laughs> this may give you a subtle hint of one of the reasons I thought uh, drama would be the right feel for me. <laughs> <laughs> We've also got a class picture of you. There he goes. There, there, oh there's there's the rock singer. There's this his... almost could be a scene from same time next year. Well, though. there's a little point of guitar playing here and there. Let's uh, give a plug to the June Bug Jamboree. Right. The annual yes, event on LHS. Yes, Lovemore <laughs> Senior High School, the pioneers. Uh, very strong. Now, you were an Army brat, which is why you were in Leavenworth in that's, the first place. That's why I wound up in Leavenworth for, uh, my father was stationed at Fort Leavenworth for a while, and for two years, and then he went over to Korea, and we stayed on in several apartments in, in Leavenworth, the city itself, and uh, it was a nice time. You know, we used to go to Homer's and have uh, hamburgers. Homer's, of course. Onion rings, oh you know, and <laughs> live Richard, the high the, life there. These pictures tell us that you were interested in entertainment at that age, yeah. of course, so it's been a continuing interest of yours ever since back when? Oh, I think uh, since uh, I first earned 50 cents. It's strange because there's a line in the play. See, my uncle gave me 50 cents. I right. ran all the way to the candy. Yes. Well, my uncle gave me 50 cents uh, when I was about 12, I guess, to be in my first play. And uh, he had to bribe me because I had no interest whatsoever in going down and acting like a fool in front of people. You know, But, but we worked out a contractual arrangement. I would get 50 cents and I and I wouldn't have to cut my hair during the week this, that this play was on. And so, so we worked out our arrangements, and uh, from then on, uh, I've enjoyed it. Richard Sanders is in the same time next year, Tiffany's Attic, Lisa. You he recognizes that single. Richard Why don't you sign, sign off? off? Why don't you do it? Can you sign us off? <laughs> well, sure. This is uh, KH KHSB. Close enough. <laughs> okay. KSH. You want me to talk to this camera? See, this is just like, oh, this it's is just like, like radio, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Here we are, Kansas City 41. We're signing off right now, but we want you to come back tomorrow at the same time, same place, just as we'll be at Tiffany's Attic Dinner Playhouse, Very same good. time tomorrow night at 8 o'clock. <laughs> good night and have fun. Thank you. The news department. And in the second place, we are never going to find anyone who's good enough to work with me. Oh, well, I can't go on doing the news, the sports, the weather, the traffic. The hog the reports. Hog reports all by yourself. You need help. Nonsense. Play the tape. Okay. It's 12 noon in Cincinnati, and this is the WKRP News Roundup. Must be at the wrong speed. It sounds like a woman. Wait a minute. <laughs> West Germany as tensions increase over the That's common Bailey. market and American I haven't got time for jokes. Domestically and internationally, oil remains the number one concern. Oil schmoil, give me a break. <laughs> I mean, she's pretty good. I like her. Bailey? Sure, less Bailey. Why not? Now wait a minute, Travis. She's young and inexperienced, and she's a a what? A what? A what? A what? A, a, a woman less? <laughs> Unless there are thousands of stations in this country with women on the air. As Disc jockeys, yes. But this is news, Travis, news, important stuff. Les, what about, uh, what about Barbara Walters? I west my case. 